It feels really good to be holding this finally, guys. See, the Violet Redwoods encompasses the joyful and darker emotions we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Some feelings are subtly woven among lines of prose and dialogue. Others have bled into the ink. Short stories Midwest Moon and Salvation for One pull on the supernatural while Pitter Patter strolls in with the idea of forming a family. Poems, Time of Saturn and Ostrich Thinking, breathe life to the emotions society doesn't allow us to exhale as moonlit play breaks magic to the mundane of night. Hello, my writing pals and my reading pals. Today is a day that I have long awaited to arrive and it's a little bit past arrival. It is the day that Through the Violet Redwoods is finally up for sale. The physical copy, I have it here in my hands. Pages aren't falling out. The cover is actually correct. Art is good. Dang it, I was looking at the I was looking at the screen and not the camera that whole time. I I don't like when I do that. But yes, yeah, so technically this has been out for a week or two. Um, I have been waiting on Amazon to get their act together because Amazon still does not have my book listed properly. It has the book through a third-party seller that may or may not even be this official copy. Um Yeah, currently the only place you can get this copy, the physical copy, is at Barnes and Noble. Um, you can get the ebook on either Kindle or Nook, though, being Amazon and Barnes and Noble respectively. But yes, Through the Violet Redwoods is finally here. I dreamed up this project at the end of a visit to Indiana to see one of my best friends. I had been working on a lot of short stories and poems at the time for some of my college courses. Looking through my Google Drive, I realized that I had a lot of short stories and a lot of poems, and I had a lot of ideas for a lot of short stories and poems. So I started compiling them and seeing if I had a common theme among any of them. And I found a theme. I found a theme in how people react to intense emotions. And so I started writing pieces based around that, and I... I put through the Violet Redwoods together in technically like five months, but then with all the problems with Ingram Spark and Amazon that I'd been facing, it took a little bit longer for it to get out into the world, but it's finally here. You can finally read it. It feels so good to say that I have had friends buy copies and they've sent me photos of them with it. And it's just so exciting to see people holding my little book. And I hope that you want to hold my little book. It's not that large of a read. It's a very quick read. You could probably get through it in an afternoon if you so chose. It feels really good to be holding this finally, guys. It has been absolutely crazy. Oh, like I've, I've literally lost sleep over this and it's finally here. I can finally get my sleep back and ew, I've already sold, a, you know, some copies, which is really exciting. Um, People I don't know are buying the book. People I do know are buying the book. I don't know which is more terrifying. The other day, my boyfriend said his aunt, whom I've never met in our almost these seven years of dating, uh, is gonna buy my book. I'm like, <laughs> like that's gonna be her first impression of me, the woman who's dating her nephew. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that I'm gonna have family members read this. Not like there's anything horrible in this, but as you all can tell, I'm a I'm a rather bubbly person. I like being a little bit more of a bubbly person. I like being happy. I definitely have my days where I'm not, where anxiety and depression just kind of cloud everything, but I try to have a positive outlook as often as I can. And Through the Violet Redwoods was another way that I could get some of those emotions out of me so that I didn't have to deal with them, that I didn't have to hold on to them. As per request of one of my friends who was an alpha reader and a beta reader and a critique partner and just someone who was helping me out with this a lot, I asked her if I were to read an excerpt of any short story or a poem or anything for a YouTube video, what it would be. And she asked me to read Moonlit Play. So I'm going to open up the book. And we are going to go to Moonlit Play. And I am going to read it for you all. And it even has a little bit of artwork that I will show you, so. Moonlit Play. The trees swayed with the song in the wind. The setting sun was chased by the cool of night. Purples and pinks joined blue in a dance in the sky. And the moon rose steadily over the horizon to glimpse the last breath of its companion. 
Frogs and crickets struck up a new tune, accompanying the wind. The fireflies lit the scene. And if one looked carefully, a fairy or two could be spotted playing near tables of mushrooms and rings of rocks. The potted flowers shed golden dust as accessories for all who wandered near, and the fox lay still and silent for anyone who wandered far. The moon watched over all, keeping a tally of nature's play. And when the moon grew tired and the musicians lost their beat, everyone would lay down a while as the moon sunk low, waiting for the warmth of the sun to bring a new game to play. And the cycle would repeat and repeat and repeat. This has to be one of my favorite pieces in the collection as well. It has a very story-like fairy tale feel to it, which I really wanted with this piece. It's, it's very contrasting to a lot of the pieces in the collection, but very similar in the very mystical and magic feel that it has to it. And I commissioned an artist who is near and dear to me to do some art for this book, as everyone knows. So I'm going to reveal the piece that uh, she drew for Moonlit Play, and it is this. It is so pretty. I love it. So if you look really close, I don't know if my camera's going to pick up on it, but there's the little fox laying still and silent for anyone to wander far. And there's also, it's kind of cut off by printing, but there's another one right there too. If you can see it, hopefully you can. Um, and she also drew all of the trees for the side art for the book. So these are on every single title page and I couldn't be happier with them. I have I have bones to pick with the book. Obviously, I think everyone looks at a finished piece of work and goes, oh, I could have done something better with that. But honestly, I look at this and I do my very best to look past the tiny little things that I notice now. And I'm working on just feeling proud of myself because I did this. I put this collection together during a time where I did not feel I did not feel the best uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. I, I was really questioning a lot of things and just putting this together. And it's almost as if this was also just a project for myself to do for myself. Um, obviously I want it to do well. I want people to buy it. I want people to read it. I would love to miraculously make back all of the money that I put into this project. Um, which if you guys want me to talk about how much money I spent on this as a self-publishing author, everything that goes into it, I could break down all the costs, um, hit me up. I would be more than happy to do a video like that. I think people really like those videos. Very transparent, very open. Um, but yeah, I put a lot into this and people can finally get it. And it's really exciting. Like I'm an author. I've signed copies of this book before for people who live in, uh, my friends who live in town with me. Um, I'm hopefully going to be selling signed copies on my website soon, nightshadepublishing.com. Um, probably won't happen for a while, so if you're holding out to get a signed copy, but you really want to get the book, maybe get the book, and you can get a signed copy later, because I, I don't know when that's going to happen. It'll happen eventually. Uh, probably not by the end of this year. I could try something though, but um, yeah, maybe I'll do a book signing in like somewhere close to where I live in the Midwest. Who knows? That's all just like, I feel like that's things for like authors who actually have like a lot of people invested in their book and who, I, I don't feel like that's me yet, but hopefully it will be soon. And in these last few moments while I have your attention before you go buy this copy, not this exact copy, this one's mine. This is my final, per this is my final copy. I had to buy this from Barnes and Noble to get it because Ingram Spark was going to take forever and I just wanted a copy in my hand. So I bought one myself. I, s I paid full price for this book. Go pay full price for my book. <laughs> go, go buy my book, please. No. <laughs> Buy two copies, gift one to a friend for Christmas. I'm working on the hard sell tactic right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, right before I close out the video, I want to mention that I am hosting an open call, an open submission for another anthology that will be coming out in, I believe, 
July, June or July of 2022. It is titled The Willow Tree Swing Project and the theme or prompt for that collection is green. Take that as you will, interpret it how you will. Anyways, um, that's that, that is this. Here is this, you want this. You see this? It's good. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope I have inspired you to go grab a copy of my book. Uh, if you can't tell, um, I'm proud of this and I want other people to enjoy it. I thank you for being here. Um, you can follow me here on YouTube. You can subscribe. Uh, I upload videos about once a week about fun bookish and writing related things. You can also find me on all of my other social medias. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Xana's Books. Um, you can also follow me on most social medias at Nightshade Publishing. I will be posting updates about the Willow Tree Swing anthology. And I might also be cooking up some other anthologies throughout uh, 2022. So keep your eyes peeled for that if this one doesn't necessarily pluck a chord and resonate with you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!